Hello everyone and welcome back. So we covered variables and data types in the last uh, video. And if we are going to head back over here uh, in our guide, uh, this is basically what we've covered. So aside from the variable, we have the following data types. And uh, we also discussed a, just two uh, built-in JavaScript functions, write in order to write the simple text on the, on the page and type of in order to determine what type of data uh, is being uh, uh, stored in a particular uh, variable, okay? So now we're gonna be covering uh, manipulating elements or it is being uh, formally called DOM manipulations in JavaScript. So it might sound fancy or intimidating, but basically uh, DOM, manipul DOM manipulations is just a changing or influencing how the HTML elements, the div, input, h1, uh, liul elements uh, on the page, okay? I like manipulating them, could, it could be changing color or making them disappear or reveal them at a later point in time uh, in order to uh, make the, uh, uh, the web or our website interactive. Okay, so that's the importance of learning this one. So um, in order to, for us to be able to do this, uh, we're gonna be learning the following properties, inner HTML, text content, value, and query selector. So we're gonna be talking first at uh, this function query selector. All right, so let's head back to VS Code and we are not going to use this uh, project. Uh, in fact, we're, we are just going to make a copy of this project and then uh, uh, work uh, on that, okay? So what I mean by that is, let me just go ahead and minimize this one. And I'm going to create a folder here. Uh, this uh, uh, Explorer is actually this project, this one, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, select the, the previous project or, or the previous folder that we have created, Control C and then Control V to make a copy. And we will just name this DOM uh, manipulation uh, because uh, this is basically what we are going to learn in this video. So we are going to open this folder in uh, uh, VS Code. So click on File, Open Folder. And uh, in our desktop, we head over to Projects and then select the uh, DOM, manipul DOM manipulation folder and then click this button to open that up. Okay. So uh, we're going to be creating here a div and we're going to be uh, uh, using or adding a class attribute. Uh, we are just going to name this for the meantime, my underscore div. And uh, let's go ahead and right click here and open with live server. And there you have it. So, all right. So we're going to change this title as well. And the previous uh, preview, uh, uh, that we are that we were using, we have to close that because that is uh, a preview of the of the previous project. All right. So right now we are going to change the title to uh, uh, DOM manipulation uh, so that we will not be confused. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we are going to be talking about is this query selector right over here. All right. This is the uh, uh, the JavaScript way of selecting or targeting an element on the page. So this div over here, if we are going to target this in CSS, we know that it's a class, so we use period, right? And then we uh, uh, use the class attribute over here, and now we can set the height, for example, 100 pixels uh, with uh, 200 pixels, and then, uh, for example, background uh, red, and if we are going to check that over here, uh, where is it? Did we preview our project? There it is. Let me just close the other one. Okay, so uh, this is how we do it in CSS. So uh, in a similar fashion, we can do the same thing or we can achieve the same result in JavaScript, all right? But of course, if you're just going to, to, to style it, uh, we have to use CSS. Uh, what we're trying to do right now is uh, we are trying to familiarize the syntax in JavaScript because uh, CSS is not a programming language. There's only, uh, uh, there are things that we cannot do uh, that only possible with JavaScript, all right? Uh, 
So uh, we, what we can do here, so let's go ahead and delete this one. And in JavaScript, uh, we know that we can store a string, uh, a, a number, a Boolean value uh, into a variable. Uh, and we can also store an entire HTML element. For example, this one right here, this div element with a class of my div, we can store this in a variable. So let's create a variable, for example, let, uh, let's say A for the meantime, and uh, uh, we are going to store this div, okay? Uh, we are going to utilize the class my div in order to do that, just like how we do it in CSS, okay? So what we can do is we type document here. Well, that means we are referring to this document. Uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and delete this one. Okay, so we can focus on our current topic. So before we do this, document that write. But right now we're we are not going to write. We are going to select this element. So therefore, uh, this is the name of the function query selector. So we are not going to write. We are going to select. So we're gonna type here query selector. In fact, it's already here. I'll just click on that. We are gonna be selecting what? Okay, we're gonna be selecting this div. So in CSS, we use period. We also per, we also use a period in JavaScript. And we are going to copy the name and paste it over here. Uh, now that we have stored this in A, we can now go ahead and say A that style that, uh, oops. Uh, if you experience this when you press tab, just control uh, or press control Z on the keyboard to undo. All right, now I, I, I can type uh, style and then height, okay, is equal to 100 pixels, for example. And I can go ahead, let me just fix the spelling. I can go ahead and copy that one more time for the width. Let's say 200 pixels, uh, paste that one more time. And let's say background, and I'm gonna say blue. If we do that, we will be able to achieve the same result, just like what we did in styles that says is. I hope that makes sense. So uh, this function right over here, let me just separate this window. This query selector is a function in uh, JavaScript, a built-in function. And what it does is it select an element on the page. And of course, it needs an information. It needs like a name. For example, the class attribute here, uh, we have to specify it over here. The open parentheses and this uh, double quotes are part of the syntax. We really have to put it there. And in order to deepen our understanding of this function, uh, basically JavaScript uh, uh, works something like this. Let me show you like a diagram over here. Uh, so the document is an object. So just like in this diagram, for example, a car, this car has properties and functions. Within those properties, it's possible also that there are more properties within it in JavaScript. So for example, there is a property called info in this diagram, right? So info, there could be a Tesla, uh, the brand, the model, Roadster, and uh, there's another property called color. Uh, it could be black, green, and blue. Uh, uh, I'm referring to this car object. And this car also have functions. For example, this car has a function called move. And this move has some functions within it called forward, backward, stop, and start. Okay. Again, we are referring to this car over here. Uh, and uh, uh, aside from move function, there could be another function within here called entertain. And entertain maybe there's a functionality called play music or watch movie within the car, right? So uh, this is basically the most important concept in object-oriented programming, okay? So if we are going to use this diagram, if I'm going to change the color of this object, Basically, what, what I'm going to do, let me just uh, uh, fix this window over here. Uh, let me put this at the side because 
and I'm going to minimize this diagram just a little bit. So I'm going to say car and then color, right, is equal to, for example, green. Let me just drag this all the way to the left so we can see the code. So using this diagram, okay, uh, if I wanted to change the color, I will have to do this. This is the syntax in JavaScript. Now, if I wanted to play music, I'm going to say car dot, okay, entertain, okay, because the play music is right over here. I'm going to say entertain. And after this, we type period or dot, and I'm going to say play underscore music. See my colon. So using this diagram, this is how we do it in JavaScript. Okay, using the period, we call it the dot notation. Okay, we use dot in order to dig deeper into some available properties and functions within an object. All right, so anyway, I just use the term function because it is easier for us to understand. But formally in JavaScript, uh, a function that is inside of an object, it's actually being called method all right but if you're not comfortable yet uh, just uh, you can stick with the function for the meantime but just know that if a function is inside of an object we call it a method so going back over here i am now going to delete this one because this is based on the diagram this one doesn't exist in uh, javascript so here uh, we use the variable name a, but it's not very, very descriptive. Uh, the best practice, actually, you can actually use the same thing over here. All right. Uh, if you do that, uh, you can also update the properties that you have changed, and you will still be able to achieve the same result. All right. So let's go ahead and change this to red. And as you can see, we will be able to get the red color, uh, green, uh, that one, and including hex value, it is also going to work in JavaScript. So we, we can now go ahead and check this one uh, because we already have covered that. So uh, not only the div, uh, we can go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. We can create another element over here, for example, input. And uh, we are going to add a class attribute. I'll just name this input uh, one. And I'm going to copy this and paste it over here, as well as the name of our variable is the same thing. Uh, by doing that, it is easier to understand. Okay. So now uh, we are going to uh, cover this value. So the input, we know that it is a text box. As you can see over here, we have a text box. So of course, we can also, let me just go ahead and uh, uh, make some space here. So I'm going to say input one. Uh, I want uh, uh, Let's observe this uh, element right over here. I'm going to say input one, and then that value is equal to, for example, uh, 100. If I'm going to uh, save this, as you can see, we have a value over here. So we can also have like a string. I'll type uh, my name over here, and we will be able to see my name within this uh, input element. So that's for the value. And how about inner HTML? So in our div right here, let's go ahead and uh, style the color because it's currently uh, dark. Uh, let's set a text color of white. And we are going to add here like an H1. I'll just type some text and some paragraph times uh, six, just six words. There you have it. Uh, maybe we can add some padding. Okay. Uh, margin bottom. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I just want to. I just wanted to format this one. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, like so. So we have uh, an H1 and some uh, text over here uh, using the paragraph tag. Okay. Uh, the inner HTML uh, uh, property right here. Uh, it's basically like 
an HTML inside of my div. So if we are going to our JavaScript file over here, let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna say my div dot inner HTML equal to, uh, normally what you can do is for example, right here, I'm gonna type a double quotes. So what you're going to type here are HTML elements. Uh, that means if you wanted like an H1, you have to type an H1 over here, uh, maybe hello world. If we are going to save this, it will overwrite all the existing uh, previously uh, hand-coded HTML over here. It will be replaced by the one that we have created in JavaScript. All right, I hope that makes sense. Oh, not this one, this one over here. Sorry about that. So it doesn't have to be just like one element. You can have another one here, for example, uh, uh, input. All right, so if we are going to save this, we will be able to have an input box over here on the page. But as you can see, it's quite tedious to write here because uh, unlike in uh, HTML, we can just go ahead, type input, and then you press tab, and it will auto-complete. In JavaScript, you have to manually type everything. Uh, if you're going to type input over here, and then you press tab, it doesn't do anything. So basically, if you're going to type along uh, HTML elements on JavaScript, what I do on my end is I go ahead and type it here in my HTML. For example, I'm going to have some uh, a list of social media. Let me copy this and paste that two more times. Maybe this one is Facebook and the other one probably uh, LinkedIn. And uh, I'll just copy this. I'm going to cut it, Control X on the keyboard and paste it over here. Now, as you can see, we have a syntax error. This is not going to work. And as you can see, some elements are not displaying because of this uh, syntax error. So instead of using uh, double quotes, replace that with the back tick. So the back tick key on the keyboard is to the left of the number one key on the keyboard uh, or, and below the escape button. I'm going to press it right now. That's the back tick key. Now I'm going to paste the uh, uh, HTML elements that we have. So after pasting that, if we hit back over to our project, and as you can see, we have those list of uh, anchor tags and li elements. So that's the inner HTML. So if there is a situation where you wanted to uh, add uh, an HTML or a set of HTML elements in JavaScript, you use the inner HTML property. Okay, so I think we're done with that. Now the text content. Text content is uh, something similar to inner HTML as well. Uh, normally, for example, if you have an H1 here with a class of uh, my uh, title and currently uh, the title, for example, HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript. Okay, and of course we are going to see that right here on the page. Uh, for the text content, uh, we can basically just create another variable. Uh, we copy this class attribute and paste it over here. Uh, also the name of the variable. And uh, we can now go ahead and copy that right here. And we can say, my title that text content equal to, for example, I'm gonna type here my name, save that. And if we are going to check our project, now the previous value of uh, this text was replaced by the uh, text that we have in our JavaScript. All right, so that's for the text content. And not only for H1, okay, it will also work uh, with paragraph, uh, li uh, anchor tag as well. Let's go ahead and try to demonstrate uh, an anchor tag. So we have an anchor tag over here. I'll just type here my link and we'll just add a class attribute of my underscore link. So we can copy this, uh, paste it over here. We're gonna be copying this one as well. Cut this one, paste, paste. Now we can say my link 
that uh, text content. Hold on. Before we do that, uh, let's check uh, that in our browser that we are referring to this. Okay. So we can now go ahead and say my link. Okay. Dot text content is equal to, for example, go to this site, see my colon, save our work. Now it was it is replaced by this text over here. All right, so there you have it, guys. I think we have covered uh, inner HTML text content, a value query selector, and pretty much everything in this list. And I hope that this has been informative for you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.